Hi, everybody. This is Scott McLeod with another episode of the Coronavirus Chronicles. I'm very fortunate to have with me a couple guests from the Hong Kong International School in Hong, Chong, Hong Kong, China. Uh, Don Drake is the Associate Head of School. Veronica Booth is the uh, Communications and Public Relations Manager. And so they're going to share with us today how HKIS has been responding to the pandemic challenge. So Don and Veronica, let's just dive right in. Um, you're about eight, ten weeks ahead of many other places around the world in terms of dealing with remote learning and pandemic challenges. Um, how have you responded and maybe in particular, what are you doing now that we should maybe be looking ahead to uh, in the future? Sure. Well, well, good morning and thanks for having us. Um, Pleasure to share some of our insights in terms of what we've learned along this journey. And as you mentioned, we're, we're 10 weeks into it. So um, we've had a lot, uh, a lot go on. But again, I think um, what I'd say first and foremost, we're very, very proud of, of our faculty. And what I would say the goals from the outset um, to sort of give you some history is we were, we were informed right when we started our Chinese New Year break on January 25th, that we would be closing down school. Um, and we had to call together all of our, our leaders and, and really kind of, as most schools or districts are doing, I'm sure they're in the States, um, pulled together all of our resources to figure out, okay, how are we gonna do this? And, and what's it gonna look like? With the real premise being that um, we have a responsibility to ensure that moving learns, moving, learning moves forward and um and it's what our parents expect it's it's the standard that our that we have for ourselves as a school um and and we were we're lucky enough to have i think some really just remarkable faculty and, and principals that um rose to the occasion to to really put together what i think I can say emphatically is that learning has moved forward and that, you know, we have from the get go said if this stays this way until June, um, that we will ensure all families that uh, their child will be able to matriculate to the next grade, uh, that they'll graduate and be ready for college. Um, and so feel really good about that. Um, one of the key things we did, if it helps, and, and our context is going to be a little different than a lot of places, is um, we have, as an international school, we've got faculty and administrators from all over the world. Um, but when this all broke, in some places, people were on vacation. And, um, and some schools in this international community sort of had... Um, left people to say, stay where you are until we figure this out. And we um, asked all of our faculty to be back in Hong Kong uh, by January 3rd. And, and that was met, as you might imagine, and, and certainly through the first couple of weeks with some frustration as people dealt with the emotion of this virus, wondering if they're gonna get sick, why would you bring me to Hong Kong? We're right next door to China. Um, and so that was certainly, um, led to some frustration with people. But I think as we've now learned, Hong Kong's done a pretty good job of managing this. Uh, again, luckily all of our faculty are still healthy, so we're, so we're doing quite well. Um, but that was one key thing, is that we were able to have faculty here and then really start to put in place some, some uh, strategies that ensured that learning moved forward. Uh, key things I think our principals did, and one of them that, that I would say started the journey is we looked at things and I can, probably break it out to you sort of from our four divisions. In our lower primary school, our, our principal Jeff Heaney did a remarkable job. He had been through MERS, I believe, in, in, uh, in and his school had actually done some online learning previously. They used to practice a day a year in terms of kind of making sure faculty was prepped for this work. And um, and so he got together with some of our folks uh, and, and really sort of um, tapped into the resources of all our curriculum specialists and basically said, we've got to get curriculum uh, ready. And so what's it going to look like? And each of them being specialists, both in literacy and mathematics. We've had someone in social studies and science really looking at our core disciplines, but then also looking at our specialist teachers in, in the arts and in music. Um, they, they all got together and said, okay, here's what we're gonna create. They're, they're veteran teachers to certainly know what is gonna need to be you know, completed by the end of the school year. 
and um, and what's going to be um, what do we need to hit the ground running with? Um, and he he worked really closely with those folks to create what we call learning grids. That basically, as we were going to put this responsibility, unfortunately, in it was our responsibility, but the parents were going to have to sort of hold some hands of the children. Um, they uh, these learning grids were really easy to use, user friendly formats that really scripted um, what we needed kids to do. And then what we required teachers to do was uh, create videos, whether it be a mini lesson. Uh, and again, all trying to talk about what are the key things there. Uh, keep it less than four minutes, you know, um, small chunks, very targeted, focused instruction so the kids know what's going on. And then, um, and then we launched all that, whether and by discipline. So uh, each of the homeroom teachers would do a morning meeting. Um, and, and then sort of an, another mini lesson on, on whatever their, their particular work was. The, the one thing that also happened that this sort of highlighted for us, and then I would, I, I'll use the context of our upper primary school, is they, um, they initially started off using their teacher blogs. And those teacher blogs were really long and in some cases really challenging for faculty to or parents to kind of navigate through. What am I supposed to do? And by the end of week one, they too had launched to these learning grids that laid out the work for the week for families, uh, put together resource pages where parents could print out um, any sort of additional documentation they needed. And, um, and, and, and then again, what happened in all these, in these two divisions is they divided up because we've got 10 grade levels per, or 10 teachers per grade level. Um, they divided up who's gonna you know, teach what units. And so they got teams of teachers who focused, two or three teachers focused on literacy, two or three teachers have focused on, on social studies, two or three have focused on science, and two and three have focused on mathematics. And that's throughout the, 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 both of those divisions. So we really think we've been able to put together a very robust learning program that you know, kids and parents have found quite easy to navigate. They have all the things they need at their fingertips. And, um, and so, as I said, we've, the goal being we've pushed learning forward and I think we've, we've uh, continued to hit that target. That's awesome. Um, so middle school, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, now I got about three, four minutes left. Sure. So I want to ask you a little bit about challenges a couple months in. Um, always still people navigating the, the emotion of it all. Um, being away from their families, many of them from the states would be one. Uh, the time that has been required to prepare these materials, as well as many of these parents are also, uh, or these teachers are also parents as well needing to support their kids in the home learning. So that's, those have probably been the two biggest challenges. And those things have come out of some surveys that we've done to, uh, to ensure that how are we doing both in terms of what we've you know, checked in with our, our student and parent community, as well as surveys of our faculty saying, how are you doing with, with everything? And, and so the anxiety being one, um, and, and the other being just the time it takes to do all this as well as take care of their own family and their own personal uh, well-being. Got it. Okay. Um, we have a couple minutes left. I don't know if you want to share. I know you had a couple resources that maybe you want to share on the screen just to kind of get an example of the flavor of what these your teachers are doing. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna also say just uh, between middle school and high school and then Veronica if you want to put up one of those learning grids for upper or lower primary it'd be great. Middle school, they just, they kind of went with a blended learning um, model following their bell schedule. And then with high school, they, they went with a, with a synchronous learning model, which was follow the bell schedule. Kids will be in these classes. Um, and that worked quite well or has been into what of connecting with kids. So and that's been the other big, I think, thing, thing we found is, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna, so that's interesting because a lot of schools here in the states are saying we don't want kids to just sit in front of the computer for six, seven straight class periods, right? Like they're scaling back the school day um, in, in terms of synchronicity. Yeah, we've. I mean, I, I think we're finding a balance of that, but to 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 certainly launch, it was very effective for high school. Particularly, it also I think in some small way connected the kids 
both with the teacher and uh, and with um, and with this, with each other, despite the fact they couldn't. In fact, that was that was one of the things we initially were really concerned about that in the lower and upper primary, with screen time for the younger learners, and um, them getting a chance to connect was hugely popular and and actually has been very positive for teachers to work both in in one-on-one -on -one connections with kids and moving their learning forward, um, as well as just the connection with peers. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, cool. Why don't we uh, see something you want to share with us, and then we'll kind of wrap up. Great. Good stuff. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. All right. So here. Just can you see the screen here? Um, so this is this is for example our grade one home learning screen. So um, we have uh, a main a landing page here with a whole bunch in our intranet um, with a whole bunch of information about the suspension. So we have sort of government guidelines, FAQs, all of the letters we've sent to the community plus a home learning, um, easy access to a home learning portal. So you can see, for example, what the quarantine, current quarantine restrictions are in Hong Kong, a bunch of the FAQ here, it's just a single page, um, all of the letters we've sent to the community, um, and then our four divisions, which is basically elementary split into two, lower and upper, and uh, high school split in, or sorry, secondary split into two, middle and high school. Very cool. Um, so then if you go into say grade one, you can see we have our home learning activities on a week to week basis and then Chinese studies, um, home learning activities. Then we have these extension activities which are around PE and art uh, and music okay. um, and social emotional learning. Or we have a very strong counseling program here at the school to support our, our kids from uh, pre-kindergarten all the way through grade 12. Uh, and then some online resources. Um, so just to quickly share what the weekly grid looks like, you have um, the week that we're in. So last week, we're on spring break now. So last week was March 30th to April 3rd. Reading, writing, math, and Chinese studies up here. A button where parents can print all the resources they need in the week, um, which leads to a Google, a Google Drive with those there. Um, and then uh, instructions about the learning reads from previous weeks. So if you want to know what we did last week, you can click uh, there as well. Um, and so this is all in our internet. So people will need, you know, passwords to um, get to certain um, certain areas. But in if you went into the reading grid, for example, oh, it's just taking a second to load. It takes you to a Google Doc where you have the whole learning for the week. So this way. Um, teachers are very are, are able to communicate very clearly with parents these are the expectations over the course of the week so while you know we believe that students should be doing a, you know what they need to do on monday on monday if you know parents need to take a break or they can't get to it then they understand this is where the kid needs to be by the end of the week um, and we have all sorts of uh, uh links in here with other resources in order to make that um uh, a little simpler. And as Don was saying, like this is the same for the, all of grade one, right? So we have 10 classrooms in grade one of around 20 students in each. So one of the, the things that we were thinking about um, uh, was if you have a kid in, or you have several kids in different grades, you want it to look the same, right? As a parent, you don't want to have to be navigating a different look and feel for your, for your reception one kid and your third grader, right? Um, or your second grader. So we wanted to make things as, as easy to, to understand as possible and as consistent throughout the grade. So it was a new way of collaborating also for our teachers um, who have a little, um, uh, in, in a normal school day, have a little bit more um, say in how they uh, approach each of the learning standards that they're, they're heading, uh, that, they're, that they're trying to reach. Uh, so that was a bit of learning as well to figure out how that collaboration would work. But yeah. it's, it's worked out really well and it certainly has simplified life, I think, for teachers as well. And it's freed them up to do um, more things um, uh, in order to, so that we can be sure that the, the basic resources are, are being shared and the standards are all being met um, through these 
through these learning grids. Cool. Thank you so much. That's super fun to see. Yeah. Um, um, so we're kind of past our time already. So um, the stuff you're sharing a lot to share. Amazing. What's that? We have a lot to share. I know it's fantastic. I think I do want to ask you one more question, if I may, um, which is so now that you've done all this great work, what will you do next year? <laughs> will you go back to what was? Will you do some of this stuff? What do you no, think? I mean, I think that's 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 the real sixty-four thousand dollar question, right? Is is um, we're really working with our faculty right now to really be reflective on what does this mean now and what's it going to mean for us in the future i think for next year some of the things that we're seeing you know the fact that we're getting that consistency amongst teachers because there might have been some some differences by each practitioner which you never want to you know i'm not one who would sit here and argue for pacing guides or things but to give you know there's still the craft of of teaching but the consistency of what's been laid out has been really strong and so i think it just continues to ground our work will be one thing We've seen our faculty get upskilled a bunch, but um, but the bigger thing that I think has come away, you talk to a lot of teachers about what this has done, is it's required them to go back to the very basics that they learned when they were teachers, right? Have clearly defined learning targets. You know, so it's kind of just been a, a regrounding, and then, yeah, it may mean we do some things different in the future as well, just to kind of um, uh, figure out what, um, in some ways, our kids learning better through this medium. You know, some of the screencasts that our teachers have made in terms of, of mathematics, very similar to Khan Academy sort of approaches have been really great for kids because they can go back and watch what's happened. So there's a lot of reflection to take place in terms of what's it mean in the future. Yeah, it's very cool. Um, and I love the team approach, right? Where everybody kind of pitches in and figures out what their part is rather than each teacher trying to figure it out individually. So. Kudos to you all for getting that set up as well. Yeah, it's been a big help. Uh, so um, we could obviously talk for a long time. This has been absolutely fantastic. Thanks so much for sharing the website. Um, really great stuff there. I know my viewers will enjoy that as well. Uh, Don and Veronica, appreciate your time. Uh, good luck with between now and you know the end of the school year. And um, it's really nice to see what it could be you know a few weeks or months ahead of where we are here in the States. So appreciate that as well. Glad to share. Thank you. Thanks, Scott.